is a dangerous thing. Hope can drive a man insane. It's got no use on the inside. Unlike most species that exist purely in the moment, human beings are unique in their propensity to hope, to aspire, to believe. And this likely stems from the reality that, unlike other species, we live with the awareness that we will die one day. In order to not let this grim reality hamper us in our day-to-day -day life, we need hope in tomorrow, the idea that better is coming. Whether paradise or heaven is a time, a place, an idea, a lifestyle, the belief itself nourishes our soul to give our lives a sense of meaning and direction, making it easier to tolerate present tense pain or dissatisfaction. Over the last year, as the world has endured a devastating pandemic, everyone lost something. Lost time, lost money, lost people, and for the most part, there was nothing you could do about it. You just had to wait and hope that one day, life will resume again and things will improve. In Frank Darabont's The Shawshank Redemption, hope is what saves Andy Dufresne. When he arrives in Shawshank, his freedoms are stripped away as he enters the walls of the prison. Wrongly convicted of a double homicide, he will have to serve two life sentences, so his situation is truly hopeless. Everyone on the inside also claims they too were innocent of the crime they were convicted of, showing us that it doesn't matter if you deserved it or not, that you will serve your time here regardless, making Shawshank symbolize life's greatest adversity, as life itself is a death sentence. The question becomes, what are you going to do with your time here? For most, they choose to just serve their time, play little games to distract themselves, and accept the bleak situation for what it is. They won't dare to hope for more, because what good would that do? They can reflect on the past, on what they've done to get stuck here, but they can't turn that into an aspiration of who they want to become. But due to Andy's innocence, he feels as if there should be more to his life than merely existing. He wants to feel something more than just fear. He wants to feel in touch with his humanity and believe that tomorrow could be better. So Andy seeks out opportunities to make his life have more meaning. He offers to do the guards taxes to curry favor, then using that favor to make his friends' lives better. Rather than just accepting the bleakness of his situation, Andy tries to unlock the humanity within his fellow prisoners so they can temporarily feel free, whether it be the simple joys of drinking a cold beer on a hot roof after a hard day's work, or listening to opera music through the speakerphone. These small things are what make each day worth living. For trying to shine a light of hope in the prisoners' lives, Andy is punished by being forced into isolation in the darkness. But as the years go by, his belief that prison shouldn't just be time wasted, but be about working towards a better tomorrow, causes him to improve his surroundings as well as the lives of everyone in Shawshank. His belief in the future inspires him to write persistent letters to fundraise more money to renovate the old prison library, so that the inmates have a chance to indulge in reading books and listening to music, stimulating their senses, as art is what feeds the soul. Art is what allows the individual to think beyond themselves, to imagine, to hope, to believe. Belief is a theme throughout the story, Warden Norton considers himself a man of God, even perceiving the presence of a Bible in Andy's cell as a signal that he is a good person. But that Bible is just a veneer for both men's real motivation. Warden Norton's biblical quote in his office is actually a cover for his true guidance in life, as behind the frame is a safe that holds what he really values, money. And for Andy, the inside of his Bible is hollowed out to conceal a rock hammer, as Andy's real belief is in his future outside these walls, and he invests in that idea every night. For 20 years, no matter how dark the day or how bleak the outlook, he secretly carves just a little bit deeper through the wall, until all of his hard work and dedication is enough to set him free. 
but for others like Brooks, rather than wishing for a way out of their dark situation and hoping for freedom, they made peace with their surroundings and settled into their circumstance. This made Brooks wholly unprepared for life in the outside world, as he had begun to value freedom so little that he didn't know what to do with it when he had it. This mindset encapsulated in his decision to tame his baby crow Jake to stay with him throughout his life inside Shawshank, rather than setting him free to fly outdoors where it belongs. For Red, while serving his life sentence, he developed a similar mindset to Brooks, not entirely making peace with being inside, but not allowing himself to dream of the outside, as he fears that hope would only lead to disappointment, which would then lead to more pain. Andy tries to share his dream for the future with Red, to one day join him on the Mexican coast at Cihatuaneo. Red admires Andy's attitude, but also fears it. I don't think you ought to be doing this to yourself, Andy. This is just shitty pipe dreams. Every few years, Red has a parole hearing. The first two meetings, he tries to portray himself as rehabilitated and ready to take on the responsibilities of the outside world, thinking that this is what they want to hear him say, but both times, he's denied. It is only when Red truly gives up and sounds as if life has defeated him that they grant his parole because Shawshank's goal is to suck the hope out of you, as hope is what makes life worth living. They send you here for life, that's exactly what they take. Red is then sent on the same trajectory as Brooks, the same bus, the same job, the same bedroom. The outside world is in many ways just a prison in itself, built around rules, responsibilities and routine. Red finds himself feeling tired and scared all the time. His life has no meaning out here, just like he didn't allow his life to have real meaning in Shawshank. Until he follows Andy's instructions and finds his letter. Andy provides a vision for the future, a dream to share, and having been inspired by Andy's courage and belief so far, Red follows his path instead of Brooks as he now realizes that the choice on the outside world is the same as the choice was in Shawshank. Get busy living or get busy dying. Hope is so contagious that even inside Shawshank, just knowing Andy had escaped was enough to give Red flashes of possibility of where he might be, what he might be doing, who he might be with. I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. He never expected he would have the patience or belief to follow in his footsteps. But each time Red pulls further in Andy's direction, the world becomes more open and free. The bright majestic images that could previously have only been imagined begin to become reality. Andy Dufresne took 20 years to slowly tunnel his way through the prison walls of Shawshank. He then had to crawl through 500 yards of shit in the darkness with nothing but a flashlight of hope to guide him so that he could finally earn his freedom. And once he got it, he made the most of it for the rest of his life. And with time, more followed in his footsteps, sharing in his vision for a better tomorrow. Because no matter what you're going through, no matter how dark things get in your personal prison, hope is what sets you free. Well, you've made it this far, so you might as well like, comment and subscribe to help get this channel to the next level.